Hi you guys, I'm Lindsay. Welcome to my channel, Inside the Hem. If you're new here and just joining me for the first time for the Royal Wedding So Long, then welcome. I hope you like everything that I have to bring to you over the next eight weeks, I believe. Um, today's video kicks everything off and I am so excited to show you what I have found. We are going to be working on New Look 6526, which is a really gorgeous fit and flare dress. It has two different bodice options, as well as an option for a lace overlay, and then has three different skirt op options. We have a knee length, we have a midi length, and then we have a high-low hem. So today's video is all about fabric and ready-to-wear inspiration that I have been able to source all across the internet. So we are going to kick things off with some fabric inspiration. I hope you like what I have to show you. All right, so according to our pattern envelope, um, we do have some options for suggested fabrics. So on here they recommend brocade, chintz, crepe back satin, damask, dupioni, sateen, satin, shantung, and taffeta. Um, they also recommend border print fabrics to achieve a look like this one where the bottom of the dress is kind of a different pattern than the top of the dress. This is all one cut of fabric and it's just, you know, printed that way. Um, and then also lace for view B bodice and sleeves and um, waistband can all be done in lace as well. So I thought it would be neat to take a look at some different swatches and to kind of get a look at some of these um, fabrics that they suggest, but I also wanted to give you guys some options as well. So we'll kind of go through um, a bunch of different types of fabrics here that I think would all work for this pattern. Okay, so the first few I have here are all what is called jacquard. And jacquard Card is really just named for the loom that it's woven on. Um, it's named after the person that invented the loom. I can't remember their name, but it's Mr. Jacquard. Um, and basically, the um, identifying factor of that loom is that instead of the fabrics being woven and then the pattern being printed on top, a jacquard loom actually... Um, weaves the pattern into the actual fabric. So you'll notice on all of these, the pattern is woven in and it's not just printed on top, which is really neat because for some fabrics um, made on the jacquard loom, for example, damask, um, it can be two-sided. So it's reversible. So you have this one here with the blue background and then on this side, you have the more beige background. And this can create you know, a really beautiful um, kind of garment like our dress. If you were to, for example, put the bodice in one version and then the skirt um, in another, you could really play around with one cut of fabric using damask, um, which is really fun and interesting. Um, this is what they call brocade. Um, brocade usually has some metallics woven in. Um, and again, it can be reversible. So this one has a lot more of the, the white cottony part, and this side has more of the metallic part. So again, you could, you know, combo this on your dress and do one side for the bodice and another side for the skirt, which I think is really fun and obviously very versatile. Um, and these are also a type of brocade, but this one is like textured um, in a way. I guess this one's textured too because it's metallic and the metallic part does feel different than the cotton part, but this one's actually raised. Like you can feel a bit of, you know, a texture whenever you run your hand across it. Um, and so these all, let's see, this came from Joanne. I, this is the same fabric that I did my ballet dress in, if you guys remember that around the holidays. Um, so you know what that one, I mean, and the pattern that I used is kind of similar to this one, so you could get an idea of what this looks like. Um, this one I got from fabric.com. Here is the information. If you want to jot that down, pause the video, but I'll have it linked in the description box below as well. And then both of these came from Stylemaker Fabrics. 
So if you go to their site and you type in the search bar 12021 or 12011, um, you'll be able to find both of these. But I just thought all of these prints were beautiful for a wedding type event or any kind of springy event. Obviously these lighter colors may not be great for a wedding because you don't want to upset the bride and being in something, you know, this this white. Um, but if you're doing a graduation or, you know, maybe even um, a baby shower or something like that, I think this would be perfect. Um, this jacquard with the light blue and taupe background I just think is so gorgeous, this damask. Um, and then these two, I mean, you can't go wrong with like a big, bold red. Wink, wink, hint, hint to something later. <laughs> um, and roses and florals, you know, they're just so perfect for a wedding. But these could also, whereas I feel like this one is more of a daytime event, this one too, I feel like these are nighttime events, maybe because of the black background, I'm not sure. But so here are some options for you guys that cover a few that were mentioned on our pattern envelope. Um, so we've got a whole variety of jacquards here, including damasks and brocades. So those are some fun options. Um, some others that I pulled are um, what are they? They are sateens. Um, sateens are usually 100% cotton with maybe a small percentage of lycra or some kind of stretch in them because they usually are stretchy, hence the name stretch sateen. Um, and that just makes for a really comfortable dress. You know, we have this, this midriff bodice here and Let's say you were going to a wedding where food was being served and you wanted to have some extra, you know, room to grow for your food. Um, a stretch sateen is a really good option because, you know, it'll move, it'll grow with you. So here are a few options that I have. Um, this one is a really beautiful print. The thing about sateens is that, I mean, you can find them in so many different beautiful, beautiful and versatile prints. So this one is a huge floral print. You can see the the width of that flower is almost as big as the the screen here, um, but it has you know huge, huge, huge floral print, which I think would be beautiful for our skirt because it is so big and voluminous. And even D that has the longer skirt in the back, you just know that you're going to get such a beautiful swatch of this. Um, large floral print on your um, skirt back, which is really nice. This one is Stylemaker Fabrics 11224. Um, she also has these lemons, which are really fun, maybe not for a wedding, but you know, for some kind of garden party or daytime event. Um, even with a jean jacket, this would be very, you know, just regular old day time wear, even to the office maybe. Um, 11862 is your item number on that one, again has some beautiful stretch to it, but you can see that um, the backside is, this is printed on, you know, it's not woven in like our jacquards are. So um, you will be able to see this white on view D whenever you're walking. So that's something to keep in mind for sure. Certainly the reversible jacquards that I showed you earlier would be perfect for view D because even if you saw the wrong side, it's still pretty and it's just the reverse of the front side. So. That's something to keep in mind. Um, this is one that, uh, this is the one that came in second place for me. And this was like a runner up that I almost got to make my version in. I'm still not convinced that I'm not gonna make <laughs> a version in this. Um, I just love the navy background with the bright pop of the floral. I just think that that is so pretty. But they're ultimately the reason why I didn't choose it is because it felt like so many other dresses that I have and I really wanted this one to be special. So I opted for to not get this one, but it may still end up in my stash. Um, and then, oh, and the item number on that is 11871 from Stylemaker Fabrics. This one came from Joanne, or I'm not sorry, I'm sorry, not Joanne, um, fabric.com. And I just loved the beautiful blush pink background. Um, and a lot of the inspiration photos and images that I found, um, this pretty blush pink color, being as it was last year's Pantone color of the year, um, there's just a lot of ready to wear in this color. And so I thought it would be neat to draw some inspiration from that. But it has like these very large, cranes on it so it's kind of got like a bit of an Asian vibe going um, which 
may be your thing. Who knows? Um, but I just thought this one was really, really beautiful. Again, stretch sateen. Um, and all of these, let me give you the item number. Here's the information on that. If you want to grab a screenshot, go ahead. Otherwise, it'll be linked in the description box. But all of these, I'm not sure how much it's going to, yeah, have a subtle little shine to it, which is really nice for, you know, when you're outdoors um, and you're doing an event outside, you know, the sun is definitely going to pick up on all of that sheen, which is really, really beautiful. This one has a lot less than the pink does. Um, this one also isn't super shiny, but you can still see the light catching it ever so slightly. Um, and maybe the darker colors, it just blends in more, but there is some, some sheen there. And if you remember me talking about my, um, that navy and cream striped dress that I made that I loved working with so much, that was cotton stretch sateen. So this is going to be very beginner friendly fabrics to sew with. It's going to be easy to press, you know, easy to make these, you know, gorgeous pleats in. Everything is going to hold its shape really well for like the bodice like this. So I just thought that sateen was a, a really good option as well. Um, another one that the pattern um, suggests is crepe black satin and crepe black satin is exactly what it sounds like it is two fabrics kind of molded together one is satin and one is crepe so you can see here that there are kind of two different shades this is our 2018 Pantone color of the year this kind of royal violet and I just thought that would be stunning for a royal wedding I just think that you will stand out so much the thing about this color is a lot of people are kind of like oh, I don't know it's like great like I'm gonna look like you know Baruch Assault from, from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. But I think it looks gorgeous on so many skin tones. So that's why I swatched this one. And again, similar to our um, Damask in, in the first brocade I show you, it's reversible. So you could have a little bit of fun doing um, maybe the bodice and the skirt in the crepe and then the, um, the midriff and the um, belt in the satin. I think that that would be really nice or you could do the entire bodice in the satin and the skirt and the crepe or vice versa. You know, you could have a lot of fun, you know, mixing things up um, with a different, using both sides of this. And again, like I pointed out before with view D, um, the, the, um, wrong side of the fabric is going to show. So it will be nice to have, you know, one of the other still be beautiful whenever you're walking or the wind catches you or whatever. Um, it'll still look really, really nice. So something that the um, pattern envelope did not suggest, but I thought was a really good option, actually is Ponty Knit. So Ponty Knit is a knit, um, but it's a very structured and stable knit. I mean, this is just about as stretchy as that um, stretch sateen is. So if you want something really, really comfortable to wear, um, I would highly recommend a Ponty Knit. And, you know, similar to the, um, the stretch sateens, it comes in a variety of colors and tons and tons of prints. So you would be able to find something for whatever it is that you are making this garment for, whether it's a wedding or you know any other kind of event that you have, you'd be able to find a print or a solid color that would work really well. And unlike the stretch sateen, this looks good on both sides. So you'll remember our sateen is printed on one side and not the other. So this side, you know, you really wouldn't, really would not want to show that. Um, but on a Ponty, you know, even if it's printed on this side, this side of it is still going to be woven in that solid color. So it would still look okay if you had to see the wrong side of it. And then I also grabbed just a swatch of lace that I had so that you could see what it would look like if you layered um, some lace on top of this. And I mean, red and black is like, pretty quintessential romance, love. I even get like a kind of a South American vibe <laughs> going with it. Um, but I just think that, you know, those look really good together. It's a floral lace. I can't even remember where I got it. I just have a, a small piece of it. But um, if you layer these on top of each other, you get some dimension and you just, it really can transform the fabric. So you could do, um, like I've suggested before, the bodice, just like View B, the bodice, 
um, in the layered part, the sleeves would be just in the lace and the skirt would be just in the ponty knit. So that is something that um, I think would be gorgeous for an event. You don't have to use ponty to make view B, obviously. You can use any solid um, with the lace um, over uh, the lace overlay over top of a solid. But um, but here is you know a gorgeous red and black. So I also wanted to show you what I am using and it is this. Oh my gosh, right? So it's a little bit outside of my comfort zone, but I just fell in love with the red and the white. It just felt so fresh to me. Um, this is a cotton sateen. It's from Stylemaker Fabrics. I will leave a link in the description box because I don't have the item number on me right now. Um, but um, it's already been washed up. It's ready to go, ready to be cut. And I really just love it. You can see um, with my hand how big these poppies are. And I just think that this is going to make a beautiful, yet romantic, um, yet totally wearable dress. Um, I have some plans, obviously, to dress it up, and then I have plans to dress it down. And for me and my lifestyle, that's what's most important, is that this isn't just relegated for one event for me, that it is, you know, wearable in many different situations in my life. So this is what I have for our fabric inspiration for new look 6526. So hopefully with all of this that I've pulled today, you can get some idea of kind of what direction do you want to go in? Do you want to go in the super fancy direction like with the jacquards or the crepe back satin? Or do you want to go in sort of a casual direction? Or you can even go in this totally wearable ponty direction, which I think um, is just really, really, really versatile. So here are all of my fabric recommendations. Coming up next, we are going to have some inspiration photos for you that I found um, on the internet. So you can see kind of what these look like whenever they're made up in a dress that's similar in style to the one that we will be making together. So stay tuned for that. So first up is our jacquard inspiration. Here are four images that I found. Um, just so you know, all of these inspiration images are posted on my Pinterest page under the board um, for the Royal Wedding Sew Along. So you can find them all there if you want some more information about them. But I included the one on the far left because it felt like the most like our style lines of the dress that we would be making. And I loved how they did the ribbon in a contrasting fabric. I thought that that looked really, really nice. Um, the second one reminded me a lot of that damask that I showed you in the fabric portion of this video. So you can get an idea of, you know, just how special and unique damask looks whenever it's sewn up into a fit and flare dress. The third image here I chose because I think in, um, instinctively I would have thought to not do the sleeved version of the pattern out of jacquard, but after seeing this one, I think that it, it can be made in a really cute and modern way, mostly by raising the hemline of the skirt. So I feel like if you're going to do a longer sleeve in the jacquard, then you need to have a shorter skirt to kind of balance out the absence of skin showing. Um, you can see here too that this one is made into a crew neck, so it's not even a v-neck. I'm not so sure that's as much of an issue as just, you know, making sure to make it in a mini skirt length. And I just think that that's adorable and I wouldn't have thought um, originally. So I wanted to throw that one in there. And then the fourth one looks almost exactly like that brocade that I showed you, the version that had the black and red one and then the gray and black one. It looks just like that. I would be surprised if they weren't the same fabric, right? Um... So I just thought that that one looked really elegant and beautiful as well. I love the gray and black version in a dress more so than I did in just the swatch. So I wanted to include that here so you could see what that looked like sewn up. But in general, the things that you're looking for um, if you're going to sew a jacquard dress is really the, the shine of it, 
the crispness of it, and then the fullness that you're going to get in your skirt. I don't think any of our other fabrics are going to provide as much structure and fullness as the jacquards will. So if that's what you're looking for, then go find a, a jacquard that you love. Okay, next up we have our cotton sateen inspiration. And I pulled these four pictures because I just wanted to show how completely versatile cotton sateen prints and solids were. Um, I wanted to show just how you could use the pattern of the fabric um, to your favor and even create your own pattern. So that's what I, that's why I chose the first one because those white stripes are very easy to hack into your skirt pattern pieces to kind of create your own striped pattern. And sateen is really great to use for this because it is so easy to sew with and so easy to press. You're gonna get beautiful crisp um, seam lines which make that really beautiful. The second one I wanted to show because A, that fabric is gorgeous, <laughs> but also because you can see in the skirt how they decided to inset a piece of mesh. And that is very, very on trend right now. Um, and so I wanted to show you how you could make it work for a wedding type event as well, where it's not too much, but just enough um, and provides a little bit more visual interest for an all over printed dress. Uh, the third one I chose because they were able to get a bit of a fuller skirt in this one, and I would not be surprised to find out that they had some kind of crinoline um, underneath to kind of um, help the dress billow out a little bit. But you can see from the other versions just how the sateen likes to lay closer to the body than the um, jacquard does that we saw in the previous collage. And then the third, I mean, I'm sorry, the fourth picture there is a border print. And I like how instead of how the pattern envelope did it from hem to neckline, I thought this was nice to put all of the visual interest into your waistline, especially if you have an hourglass figure. This is going to be a really beautiful figure pattern figure flattering look for you. So here are four inspiration pictures using cotton sateen. Here is our Ponte inspiration. You can tell from the four photos here just how comfortable and casual Ponte fabrics really are. Um, I was surprised to see that I couldn't find a ton of printed Ponte's because I feel like when we go fabric shopping, they're kind of a dime a dozen. Um, but in ready to wear, not so much. But I did love the sleeved versions, uh, one and three, and then also the fourth one. Um, so I felt like that was a good use of view, I guess, B of the pattern um, where you could use the sleeve that make it look really nice. The floral version in, um, in the first picture there is, is really beautiful and really perfect for a wedding. You could dress it up with some gold accents and you would be ready to go, but still very, very comfortable. The second version, the second picture there I chose because I liked how they added the little bow embellishment to the neckline and the collar detail. Bows are like all the rage right now. Um, you're seeing it on all the runways and even in the Oscars that were on on Sunday. Um, you just see bows everywhere. So I thought that was a really cute detail. Um, and then I chose the very last picture, the fourth one, because it just was so versatile. I mean, that's just the perfect little black dress. Some people say black dresses are bad luck to wear to a wedding, so maybe you wanna keep that in mind. I've never heard that before, but then again, I don't attend a lot of fancy weddings, so maybe that's why. But I just love a simple, chic, little black dress and think everyone um, deserves to have that in their wardrobe. And here are our gorgeous lace inspiration dresses. Aren't they all just so beautiful and perfect for a royal wedding? Um, I had a hard time, again, finding dresses, inspiration dresses, where only the bodice was done in lace. Um, the only one that I could find that was even close is the third image here. And it looks like the bodice is done out of a stretch bonded lace where the lace is already adhered to a fabric 
rather than um, an overlay like our pattern um, is, is instructed. So you're going to have to kind of use your imagination a little bit here. But I loved the one on the left, the very first picture, because if you look really closely, you can tell that the underlining of the dress is actually navy. And then the lace overlay is this beautiful burgundy. Again, the sleeves are left completely um, bare underneath with no underlining, which is exactly how our pattern is constructed. And I just thought that was a really neat, fun, um, kind of youthful, modern way to do lace with the contrasting fabrics. Um, that is very inspirational to me, and I will have that in the back of my mind for a long time, I think. Um, the second picture there I chose because they shortened the sleeve, and I feel like that adds another um, design element that, you know, you might make it look a little bit younger than with the, the full sleeve. And I also love how they did the satin ribbon for the belt or for the sash instead of the um, self fabric like our pattern recommends. So I wanted to show that to you as an option. Um, the third one I mentioned kind of before, it, it's going to get, that's more of what our pattern is going to look like when you do the lace only in the bodice, the midriff, and the sleeve, and then do the skirt in a separate fabric. For what it's worth, that skirt fabric and bow belt there are made from shantung. So if you're wondering what shantung looks like, that's it. It's kind of like similar to a dupioni or something like that. It's solid and kind of shiny with a sheen to it, um, but kind of drapier than some of our jacquards that we've seen earlier. And then the fourth picture I thought was really beautiful. Again, they're doing that inset on the skirt um, with the mesh. And I liked the solid um, belts done on the outside of the lace. That it, I'm sure that that's the same fabric as the underlining there. Um, you're not going to get the same neckline design with our pattern, but you can achieve a very similar look to this one. And that color is just gorgeous. I love a baby blue for a wedding or for any springtime event. And here we are at our last collage of inspiration pictures. I couldn't think of a more creative name, so I'm just calling this collection Other, but it's really the mixed bag of everything else that I really loved that I thought would suit our pattern really well, but didn't belong in any of the other categories. And I think that's because this one, um, the dresses here are really all about the embellishments in a way and also tweaking small little details to create a standout garment. So we have the first picture there where they use the lace trim along the center front neckline, um, a little bit of the um, midriff and also on the hem. And I just thought, I mean, yes, that one's a lot more low cut than our dress is going to be. But um, I still think that if you did lace trim on our version, um, that you would still be able to achieve a very stunning look, just like this dress here. I love the classic black and white, but if you are going to make this dress for a wedding, you, you would definitely want to stay away from white, but you could come up with a combination of a ton of other colors. Even a black dress with white trim would be, would be better. But I just loved um, the simple addition of that lace trim and how that elevated the look of that dress so much. I also want to say, based on how those pleats are done, that that's a ponte knit, the um, or um, a scuba knit more precisely. So if you're into that kind of look, then check out scuba knits. Um, I chose the second one because it's color blocked. And also it was one of the few dresses I could find that had that high low hem of view D in our new look pattern. So I love the idea of doing the bodice and midriff in one color and then the skirt in another bold, vibrant color and how they match the shoe to the skirt. I just thought the whole thing was very, very elegant. So if you're going for something a little bit more black tie, a less uh, like daytime garden type wedding, I think this would be a stunning, stunning look. The third picture I threw in because this is also a border print similar to the cover of our a pattern envelope as well as the um, print that I showed you a couple of slides ago. But this is done in a way where the bodice has the border and then the skirt has the border and then the middle of your body is the solid. 
So I just wanted to show you another option there. This is also a unique border print because that is some kind of satiny, probably polyester fabric. And then the border print is actually like a bonded velvet or something. Um, so it is much more elegant and less um, novelty print like than the other versions that you have seen. This one feels like an elevated, elegant border print, um, which you don't see very often. And then the fourth option, you're probably thinking, what the heck, Lindsay, that's just like a little black dress. But if you look closely, you can see that they scalloped the hem of the skirt. Again, a very, very simple detail, an easy hack to do for your dress, um, but adds a very sweet, sweet detail um, that will elevate your look and help you stand out at whatever event you're going to. Well, there you have it. Those are the fabrics that I love for this pattern, as well as some really great ready to wear inspiration that I was able to find. So hopefully through seeing both of those, you are able to narrow down possibly exactly what kind of dress and the, the end result that you want to go for for your particular event. So I'm gonna be posting videos for the Sew Along every single Wednesday, noon Eastern Standard Time. So join me back here next Wednesday where we're gonna go over making a muslin and assessing fit so that your pattern is perfect before you ever even cut into your fashion fabric. So until next Wednesday, bye.